Hola, San Diego. Hola, ¿cómo ah, estás? Okay, um, I, I'm, I'm tasting your wines now. Um, let's talk about the Albarino. Um, I'm having this wine um, with me now. Yeah. When I first, um, we opened this, and we didn't open, we used a Coravant to, to, yeah. um, to get, get the wine. Um, it was kind of oaky in a way, but then uh, you put in the glass for 30 minutes and it gets more fruit, more tropical, um, and also salinity as well. This wine comes from a vineyard that we own in Garzón. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in Garzón, we have granite. And uh, we have also a vineyard that is in Juanico that's clay, but we didn't mm -hmm. use for this wine. And we, we noticed a big, big difference between clay with limestone and granite. In, in, in the other way, in granite, what we got the, in 2020 was a super, super acid and with a, the lowest pH in, in, in a wine that I remember, it was a 2.95, 2.94 pH wow. in, in the grapes, okay? So it was less than a, a, a sparkling. And then when we, we you, you noted that the, the quality of the grapes were amazing. It was uh, the, one of the first vintages of, the, of this, this place. When, what happened is we fermented in mainly new barrels, uh, a little bit of, of second use, uh, burgundy style barrels. And it was in a, in, a, in a spontaneous in a spontaneous fermentation. We we were expecting something similar. What happens with a great great chardonnay? And great chardonnay after the the fermentation in the in these barrels, actually the the quality is, is amazing and the wines are almost uh, uh, rounded. Uh, they are they are kind of oaky, but uh, they are uh, perfectly uh, amazing. How long did you put in? Um, you said it's second use burgundy barrels. How long did you put? Uh, Mainly, no, wine? it was two thirds, two thirds of new. Okay. And yes, two thirds of the new. So that's why you have you have plenty of uh, almost like a nougat, almost like a praline, that kind of uh, you know sweet spice from the oak. But that yes. that is that is really that really lends itself to the to the fruit. There's fruit. There's mineral. There's more. I mean, it's 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 complex. It's very complex. As soon as we finished the fermentation, it was too oaky, much more oaky than you are tasting right now, and super acid. So it 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 asked for a, a longer period of of aging. So uh, instead of uh, waiting for one year in barrels, we we were tasting the wine and we waited longer because if you if you can uh, wait a long time in 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 barrels. The, the oak blends better. And it's what we did, it, it is 15 months in, in barrels. And then when we bottled in, in uh, 2021, we bottled the wine and I started tasting uh, every one, two months. And the, I noticed that the wine was gaining a lot of, of quality, was uh, softening the, these flavors and the, the fruit was increasing. And even the 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 sea, the sea uh, water flavors were increasing the minerality. And I waited one more year to, to show the wine. I started showing the wine in 2022 and it started to showcase a, a, a quality that was different to anything that, that we knew before. And it's, it's kind of crazy because part of this quality is given by the, by the austerity, you know, it's, Oster is 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 feels uh, it smells like sea, like seawater. Uh, it's very mineral. It has this complexity given by the by the, the good quality uh, barrels and the the wine. And it's it's not it's not super explosive at the beginning. It takes some time. I like to decant it, you know, because it takes some time to open and to to show its its whole potential in the glass. Uh, do you think there's a there's a tendency that people are making a more serious Aberinos or more um, like you guys, we put an oak, uh, put it in, in oak barrels, or maybe a, more like a, a, a you know Fr um, Spanish, um, Galician uh, Aberinos in, in in a style that is more fresh, um, more salty, um, you know, like that kind of a uh, Aberinos that yeah. you can drink immediately. You know, Al Albarino, it's making a revolution in Uruguay. 
big big revolution and we are we are making many many different experimentations so i'm i'm sure that many winemakers are doing this style are doing in food race, are doing with with least contact in tank i know many of them that are doing this these kind of things uh, we know that the the consumers a big big part of consumers are expecting a fresh young fruity albarino and we i think that maybe 90 percent of, of of the albarinos we are making should be in 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 that in that style but there's also these kind of albariños that are more for whiny guys more for people that already know albariño and they are looking for something different uh, last year a uh, three producer from galicia came to to give some seminar and and to interchange knowledge with us and they tasted this wine and two of them told me that we should wait at least five more years to release this this wine to the market Mm -hmm. and they were loving these kind of wines because this is the wine that people that already uh, are on to albariño are loving so we have these kind of wines and we also can have the the more traditional uh, fresh fruity albariño which is the albariño that people will enjoy in the pool or in in uh, in a party you know and and there's the 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 albariño is super flexible and it's crazy you have also we are making myself and I, I know that other winemakers are doing some skin contact albariño which is amazing amazing and um albariños when you harvest earlier versus when you pick it in a in a more ripe stage so it's it's a, a big moment of experimentation so um i was thinking of because uh, this is coming from this is your first vintage coming from 2020 vintage 2020 yeah. um what was the vintage like in 2020 it was a pretty nice vintage for uruguay i thought right it, it was a yes it was a very very nice vintage for uruguay we had a a, a, a nice uh, spring on on 2019 and then in during summer we had a very dry uh, a dry uh, vintage for for what we are used to and this gives a uh, very healthy grapes for because we can have rains during harvest very uh, very similar to galicia or to bordeaux we have this atlantic influence that gives rains and low temperature and it was a very uh, easy and fun vintage to have because when when we have little little amount of rains the 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 grapes are very healthy and we can wait and 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 choose when to harvest uh, we don't. We are not looking to the for weather forecast uh, every day, so we know when to harvest. And and it is a very very beautiful and and a fresh uh, vintage. And sometimes these dry vintages also give a very balanced uh, pH wines. Tell me a bit more about twenty one and twenty two. These well, two two years. The twenty twenty one, twenty two, and this one twenty three, we had very dry springs. We start with uh, dry springs. That's very important. And then the harvests were very different during the, the ripening season. In 2021, we had um, a, a slightly uh, rainy, it's, it's more rainy than that average, but it was beautiful in terms of temperature. And the rains started at the beginning of the harvest and then it, it, it stopped. So it was very good for Albarino that likes uh, rains. And also was very good for for uh, Tanat. What happened is that to prepare the the 2022 harvest, we had to put some irrigation, some water uh, irrigation in some vineyards that were suffering for from the the previous spring, and especially Albariño's vineyards in in Garzón, for instance, uh, which is granite has very, very little water retention, mm. and it makes a we we increase the quality a lot just by by uh, watering during spring and uh, it was it was 2022 during harvest it was super rainy more than than 2021 and it was a big challenge challenging uh, harvest uh, varieties like uh, albariño and tanat they 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 like the water and uh, we had beautiful albariño and tanat and also some Pinot Noirs that are amazing from from this harvest, but the the rest was a big challenge. You know, Sauvignon Blanc was a challenge. Uh, Chardonnay was was a, 
we, we had a, a, a good enough quality, uh, but it's not the the quality that we had this year, for, for instance, in 2023. And it, it was a big challenge. Then this one, the 2023, uh, it's uh, the, the driest uh, harvest and also the driest um, spring in, in maybe in, in our history. In, in this harvest, um, vineyards that could um, be irrigated or uh, have some water reservoir, mainly because of the clay, they made the big difference and the quality was amazing. We had an amazing quality with a 30 or 35% less of production. Okay, let's move on to the another wine I was really interested to um, that I, I'm interested to, in, in talking talking about, uh, which is your cold brew and your espresso. Fun, yeah. fun stuff, huh? <laughs> um, so um, these two are the I think they're the natural wines, right? You're you're making sort of the yeah, natural wine, right? I took this wine also to to many um, uh, like. London Wine Trade Fair or, or Pro Wine or different uh, stages where there's some uh, people from the trade, some winemakers and some uh, consumers. And uh, winey guys, especially winemakers or journalists, usually prefer the, the, um, the cold brew mm -hmm. because it has all these flavors that are uh, more difficult to find in, 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 in typical in wines. You know? Yeah. And especially it's in Canada. In Tanat, it's super difficult to get this this kind of linearity, this kind yeah. of fluidity, that freshness, that fluidity, that crunchiness, um, and, and and the tannins are really well poised, it's really fresh tannins, but super polished. Um, not trying too hard, you know. I I feel all the wines. I mean, speaking speaking about about tannins, I feel a lot of wines in in, in Uruguay today. They're really uh, balanced. They're not trying. The tannins are not that much in from tanat i i don't know if it's a, it's a matter of um extraction or is it is it it's, is it's, a fresher it's a vintage of, it's it's a matter of of structure and it comes because we shift our our focus uh, until 10 years ago our focus was to to make the more the the most macho wines the most uh, intense and structured wines in the world and actually, we, we were making these these kind of wines. We, we, when you tasted a one big big your wine tanat ten years ago, uh, for example, the tanat that I will show to you would be the darkest wine in in, in the whole uh, country. Uh, it would be the 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 the, the hardest and the most uh, uh, intense uh, structured wine that you tasted in the whole year. It would make you uh, it make a stand. You will never forget this wine. But maybe you will not drink uh, two or three glasses. No, no, no. I remember someone told you that you are the monsters that you make the. You used to make the, the monster the beast. Tanat or whatever. The beast, beast exactly. The, the beast. beast. So, so yeah. we changed the we changed the, the the focus. So we realized that Tanat is very intense in in tannins, in structure, and also in flavors. So we said, okay. All the wineries that we are exporting wine, we, we realized that we we could make different tannins. We could uh, enhance all the, the the best quality of the tannins, and not not extracting all the tannins, only the best tannins, and then focusing on the flavors. And that's that's uh, the, the the focus in in in, in the wine making that we have. Many of us have reached the the similar result through different uh, path, you know, through different uh, techniques. How about espresso? Um, I know this is like a faster um, extraction. Um, you yeah. you said it here, you said is, um, you know, uh, our purpose is to extract as much as possible from the tanning, tan grape skins and a little the from the seeds. Yeah, that's that's very important to extract less tannins from tannin, like, you know, that, that robust tannins. Um, so to achieve this, we macerate at the high temperature for three days from the start of the macer fermentation. Do you take out the seeds or you just include the seeds as well? No, taking out the seeds, it's, it's a very difficult process. Uh, it's, uh, I, I would, wouldn't say that it's impossible, but it would be uh, too much invasive 
for for a fermentation and almost nobody do do this it's uh, it's not uh, it's not easy it's not we, nobody is taking out the seeds so what what we have to do is uh, being able of of doing different uh, things what happens with seeds is that they are inside the grape and also the tannins that you have inside the the seed the seed is is, is somehow robust and and it's uh, it's difficult it's different from the skin the, the skin uh, is uh, more fragile and the seed is is more uh, strong no and mm -hmm. the extraction from the seed starts to to uh, increase when you have alcohol in the in the in the mast because the alcohol is a more extractive agent than water and at the beginning of the fermentation you you have mostly water and a very little of alcohol the alcohol is is increasing in the in the last part of the fermentation so if you if you uh, if you have a few days of maceration the seeds first are inside the grape mainly and secondly you don't have alcohol to extract from the inner part of the seed and and this is the uh, how we we avoid the the maceration from the seed okay that's a really good good talk san diego muchas gracias so, gracias chao